Hello and welcome to part one of my series, Ember Problems. Today we're going to be connecting Ember to a Rails API. In a previous tutorial, I built to do MVC, um, which is this fancy little app right here with Ember CLI. Uh, throughout most of the tutorial, we used the fixture adapter, which if you recall, we'll look at the model of the in the to do's. And um, it takes a static JSON object and uses that to um, seed the app. So if we wanted to create it a lot more data, it would be a very manual process. But here we can see the app updates. And so today our pro for our project, we're gonna build a simple Rails API to, to replace this fixture adapter. So for our API, we're going to use a gem called Rails API, which is by the same Rails core team, basically. Um, but it's stripped down specifically for building APIs. And we'll go ahead and install that with gem install Rails API. And then similar to Rails, uh, we're going to do Rails dash API new and then our project name, which is to do MVC API. So it'll take just a second to run as it bundles. Cool. And now we'll go ahead and move into that directory and start our Rails server, with, which is just Rails S. Cool. And this will look a lot like your standard Ruby on Rails app so far. Okay. So now that we have our project, let's go ahead and scaffold out the to-do resource. So this is just like Rails. Um, we're going to use Rails Generate, uh, G for short, scaffold, and then to-do. And then our to-do resource has two properties, title, which is a string, and is completed, which is a boolean. So we'll run that. Um, do bundle exec db migrate to go ahead and make those changes. Well, let's go ahead and check out our migration. So, yep, we can see just creating a to do's table with a string and a boolean. Oops. Bundle exec rake db migrate. All right, and now we can actually go and check out our API, which currently is just an empty array. Well, this is a little bit misleading. We actually got a lot from that scaffolding. Uh, if we go and check out app controllers, to do's controller, we can see a lot of stuff going on here. It sets up all of our basic RESTful routes. We just don't have any to-dos in, in our project yet. So that's what we'll work on next. Well, our next order of business is going to be adding some fake data to our project. We're gonna do this using um, seeds, which is in DB seeds. And um, this is just a, this is a file that gets run when we run a rake command, bundle exec rake DB seeds. So we'll see in a second. We'll do 20. So we're just going to create 20 to do. And if we we'll remember, the properties are title. And um, well, actually, let's go ahead and jump over to our gem file. We should have done this first and use a gem called faker. And this has methods for faking everything from just lorem ipsum text to email addresses and more. So I'll just. Uh, post a link to their docs and you can check that out. Um, and then for this, we'll do faker words and this returns an array. So we'll just join it to make it an easy string. And then for um, is completed, we'll just create some randomized, easy randomized true and false values sample. Okay, and so we did add a gem, so let's go ahead and bundle install. And now we'll do bundle 
exec rake db seed, which will run our seed times. And so this should create um, 20 to do's. And let's jump into Rails console and do to do all. Cool. So we actually have to do's coming back, which is good. Size 20. And we can even hop over to our little API here and see that we are getting JSON back. Cool. And next we'll need to craft our JSON a little bit. Ember expects a JSON root, which would be to do colon right here, instead of just straight up data, just because uh, if you think about an API, it could be returning a lot of different things. So it's more descriptive. We also have some extra properties on here. We really don't need for to do MVC, which is create at and update at. So to tackle this problem, we're going to have to use something called active model serializer. And let's go ahead and add that to a gem file and I'll explain what it is. Active model And word to the wise, go ahead and stick a version number on this. If you don't, you will be sad because it will not work. Um, at least when I record this. So, and we will bundle install. Cool. So next we're going to generate a serializer. And we'll really see what this does in a second. Serializer. And we're going to generate a serializer for to do. So that's that's what we're the resource we are crafting. And I'm going to pass in the properties we want to be returned with our to do, which is ID, title, and is completed. And now we just created this file inside of app serializers to do. Oh, I didn't need to pass in ID there redundant and um, so as you can see all this class does is uh, we can list out some attributes here and now if we go back um, well, well uh, we will also restart our trusty server and restart rails and Cool, so it is now working. And you'll see the, the root to do's. So if we had a different a different model coming back like users, we would have, it would say users at the top. And also we'll see that um, only the three properties that we listed are coming back. Awesome. We're now at an interesting point where we can actually use this API to power to do MVC. And um, so the first step that we're going to do is we're going to start up our to do MVC project again, but instead of just Ember server, we're also going to proxy. And then we're going to pass it the address of our rails project. So for me, it's localhost 3000. Is still running. Just restart that. Cool. So let's go ahead and look. Just kidding. Forty two hundred. And so it's running again. So let's go ahead and open up Adam. And so let's comment out these models. And so the proxy that we just did actually is going to route all of our adapter requests through, um, through our Rails API. And so we'll switch it out with the active model adapter. Save that. And if you'll notice, almost like magic, all of this um, weird Latin to-dos that we created from our API are now running in our Ember project. 
and this includes persisting all of the changes through our API. And let's see. And so we can see it's actually hitting these routes. So we just updated this to do, and um, that's pretty cool. So with not a lot of work, we, we've made an API to run off of to do in VC++. 